good afternoon. Yeah, it is afternoon. Just about. Just gone past 12 on the clock over there. Um, it's great to welcome you back to Seminar 4. Wasn't that a great session with Paul and Sue? Uh, again, just so much in that discussion. Um, I'm quite enjoying this format, um, sitting here on the sofas doing this. So we've disinfected the sofas and now we've got Paul and Ian here. Now, I don't think many of you will know Ian Russell. Um, Ian, we don't know each other that well. We actually met um, at your church in Leicester, uh -huh. uh, where Paul was, he used to do like an annual event in January. That's true. I remember thinking, what kind of a pastor organises an event on January the 1st? A spiritual one. <laughs> Far more spiritual than me, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it was great. And it great was, way to it, start the year. It, it, yeah, I can imagine it was, actually. Um, Ian, just to, uh, to... You're married to Marge. Sure. And uh, you're now living in Scarborough. Yes, we relocated here a couple of months ago. Uh, currently living with your son and his wife. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, that's Andy and uh, Harriet, and our grandson is Rupert, so he's a lot of fun to be with. Yeah, I could remember Rupert because right. my grandson, of course, is Reuben, so it's two yeah. Roos. Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, and they're, they're, they're quite, they're, he's a, Rupert's a little bit younger than, uh, than Reuben, but yeah. uh, the same crazy characters, I think, oh, by all accounts. Fun people. Yeah. Well, it's great to have you here. Thank I'm you. I'm really looking forward to uh, having you with us. You may have noticed he's not got a very strong Leicester accent. I'm not sure you'll spot where he's from by his accent at all. Um, <laughs> but no, Ian, it's great to have you here. So um, please, after you. Thank you. Well, rather than leave you guessing, I'd rather be clear and say uh, I am actually from South Wales. And uh, I grew up there, but left to go to university and uh, really have lived in England most of my life. Uh, married an English girl, have four English children. So a uh, lot of connections here in Yorkshire where all our children were born. Um, it's an absolute joy to be able to be here to speak to you. A joy to see Paul and Sue, who I haven't seen in person for 18 months. And uh, just great to catch up in between sessions. This is the joy of the lockdown being lifted. Uh, the reality is that um, it has been a supremely challenging time this last 15 months plus. Uh, it's a time of our lives that all of us who are living have never been through before with having the pandemic and the social distancing and the lockdown and the associated things that come with that. And uh, as we're coming out of lockdown, there's a phrase that has been resonating around in my heart that I would like to open up with you today. And that phrase that the Lord has put in my heart is gentleness and tenderness toward weakness. And even if we didn't know we had any weaknesses, surely during this pandemic, they've all come to the surface. And we have experienced negative emotions, negative circumstances, and things that perhaps have been buried and hidden have come to the surface in our hearts and lives. And uh, I am included in that because my nature is an extrovert. I love being with people. And there have been real blue days that I experienced by not having the option and the privilege of connecting with people, meeting with them personally, physically. There is something about physical connection that God made us in his image to be like. And uh, we've, I've missed that and, and other people have missed that. That is small fright to what? compared to what some people have been through. Uh, people who have been had businesses uh, have gone through dire times as they've not been able to trade. And worse than that, um, in this country, over 100,000 people have lost their lives to the pandemic. When you go across the world, the stats are so much higher. And uh, it comes home personally when you have friends who have family in other parts of the world, like I was speaking to my friend, recently, who has family in India, and whole swathes of his family relatives have been wiped out because of the rampant Indian variation of the COVID virus. So, we've all experienced weakness. The thing is that the pandemic does not have the final say. 
King Jesus has the final say because he is King of Kings. He's over it all. And I want to just take your attention to a scripture in Matthew chapter 11. Uh, This is Jesus speaking 2,000 years ago, of course, when he was in a, a body on this earth. But the reality is because he's the eternal one and the unchanging one, his words still carry the same resonance, value and authority that they did 2,000 years ago. So I'm reading from Matthew chapter 11. Here's a few verses. This is what Jesus says. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And in the midst of all that's gone on, these words of Jesus are as relevant, applicable and valuable as they've ever been. And his invitation is, come to me. He's inviting us into even deeper connection, even into deeper relationship, simply because everything we need for this life, as well as for the godliness that we desire, is to be found in Jesus. And he uses this amazing imagery and metaphor, come to me and take my yoke upon you. Come and Come alongside and align your hearts and your lives with me. Allow my rhythm of life to become your rhythm of life. I have a way of living that is divine. It's supernatural. It's heavenly. I want to train you in your true identity, which is to be with me, to live like me, and to represent me to the world around you. And so the invitation is there to come to be yoked to him, and to learn from him. And the amazing thing is, he describes himself this way. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you're going to find rest for your souls. When Jesus expresses what he is like, We really need to give attention to it because it's not only a revelation of himself that enriches our hearts and our souls and our lives. But because we were made in his image and in his likeness, actually, this is our destiny and destination to become like him so that if he is gentle and humble in heart, then we are destined to live his life, to be shaped by his heart and to carry gentleness and humility to those around us. And and because he loves us so much, his love is so gentle, he he knows how we are made. He, he, He has taken human form. He understands the frailty of humanity and he is never harsh with us. And one of the things that I've had to learn, and I guess I'm still in the process of learning, is I must put on my own life the same value system and attitudes that Jesus has. So if he is gentle with me, I have no right not to be gentle to myself. If he is tender-hearted, which he is, then I am to be tender to me, because actually we can't represent him well to others in gentleness and tenderness if we are not, first of all, living in the abundance of his gentleness and tenderness to ourselves. So he says, come to me, learn from me. I'm gentle. I am humble in heart. And you're going to find rest for your souls. And of course, because he is the Prince of Peace, he is able to bring us into the rest that he enjoys. And the amazing thing is that Whatever the circumstances that are going around us, 
because of the heart connection with Jesus, we can experience in the midst of contrary circumstances his very nature of gentleness, humility, kindness, and peace. And why this is so important for us, Church of Jesus Christ, is because at this time there is so much challenging times for people in the world. There is so much legacy of the difficult times that this pandemic has brought us through that I believe that the title that Paul has given for this conference for such a time as this is such a prophetic clarion call to the people of God that actually we are to discover Jesus in a whole new dimension personally for our own lives so that we can become Jesus to an aching, hurting world that's seeking to get back to normality, but actually there are things in their lives that they want addressing on, even if they don't express it. And over these last few weeks, uh, Marge and I, Marge, my wife, and I have, have, have bumped into people and the fact that we are consciously carrying his tenderness and pouring it out to them has caused them to open up in their hearts, express some of the challenges they're finding, whether it's with dysfunctional relationships or with internal pain that has come to the surface during this difficult time. And I believe that the church of Jesus Christ is destined to carry the healing balm of Jesus into the souls of people, you and I, who have been through challenging times and found the one, the lover of our soul, that pours in his love and his kindness into us, we can then pour that out to the people around us so that they can experience him because it's his kindness that leads to repentance. And having received kindness, we can give kindness. One of the things that I'm so grateful to God for is as I was being mentored as a younger person, I had people around me who in their own lives had discovered the Prince of Peace and had learned how to align their hearts with the lover of their soul in his gentleness and peace. And there was like a palpable expression of grace and peace in and through their lives that I benefited from. I, I was drawn to the environment that they were carrying. And and one of those people was a person that became my spiritual father. And he would be facing things that would wipe me out on most days. But he was able to lean into Jesus, to be yoked to him and to, to carry a peace that then he could pour out to others. And I would travel with him and we would do ministry together and one day I, I called by, it was a spring day, a beautiful spring morning. I called by about eight o'clock in the morning and uh, to pick him up for us to go on a journey. And um, I said, how are you doing today? He says, I've, I've just had a wonderful one and a half hours with the Lord in my garden. I said, oh, what, what was he saying to you? Expecting that he would tell me a scripture that he'd been reading or something that he'd been meditating on. And he says, uh, oh, it wasn't any of that. He says, um, Jesus was just giving me his peace. Now, now, this rocked my world a bit because I was expecting him to say, the scripture said this and it changed my life. But he said, Jesus was giving me his peace. Because the Prince of Peace pours out not only peace, but his joy, not only joy, but love. And, and, and these things are just divine, divine resources that he longs to pour into our lives. And it's possible to sit in his presence and to receive from him in the midst of negative circumstances, 
supernatural resource that blesses and changes us. And instead of living in reaction to the world around us, it causes us to reflect heaven's realm into our life situation. I don't know if you've ever done this before, but I would like to press pause a moment here for me talking and just open up our hearts to receive from the lover of our soul. So I'm just inviting you, just whatever you're doing, just pause a moment, just to open up your heart to the wonderful heart of Jesus because he is the unchanging one who loves you with an everlasting love, whose peace wants to heal and restore your soul and whose joy he wants to pour it in to gladden your heart. So right now where you are, I'm just inviting you to focus on him. Receive from who he is, because he's still saying, come to me. And his yoke is still easy, and his burden is still light. And receive out of the enormous abundance of spiritual riches that he carries. Let your heart be secured in his love. Let the storm come to peace. Let the concerns disappear in the light of how wonderful and marvelous Jesus is. And I bless you to know him and to know his peace, to know his tenderness and gentleness toward you so that you can carry it into every situation you go. This is an amazing privilege that we get to be carriers of Jesus and imparters of who he is everywhere we go. And right now there's a waiting world. There's people who have lived through this pandemic and have lived with legacy that is not good. I believe there are divine appointments coming your way where in carrying Jesus, you can pour what he's poured into you into others to bring blessing and relief. It's the kindness of God that allows people to repent and invites change into their lives. So I believe this can be probably one of the finest moments for the Church of Jesus Christ as we get shaped not by common culture but by be shaped by what comes from above so that we can reshape the culture to bring God's nature into our world. I honestly believe this can be our finest hour. We have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And so as we are coming to a close here, I'd like to speak over you this powerful prophetic declaration from Isaiah. Arise and shine, beloved ones, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is in you. He rises upon you. And he intends that although darkness may cover the earth and still there are challenging times out there, None of them are too big or too difficult for his magnificent resources. So arise and shine. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord rises upon you. And you are destined to bring his nature, his life and his blessing. Not only into your own life, but into your family, into your neighborhood and into the places where you go and live. I bless you to be the carriers of his glory that you were always destined to be. I bless you in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Thank you, Ian. It's really good to hear from you. I hope we'll be hearing more from you in the future. I'd love to. Love um, to. I think just as we come to an end then, um, what, what would you like us to be praying particularly for you and Marge at this time? Well, there's something very specific because um, we are buying a house here in Scarborough. And uh, of course, the legalities of a search have to be processed. And uh, there was one thing holding it up, which was the fact that there was a a double water inlet into the house and that's not permissible. That was sorted out last week. And so what I would ask for prayer is that there's a smooth and speedy resolution so that we can move into our home because this is the repositioning for the new phase that God has for us. Oh, amen. Well, why don't we pray for that let's now? Let's do that. I am, so I'm ready to receive. Yeah. So let's, let's join together in prayer, shall we? Yeah. Uh, Ian, we just bring this whole situation before our Father, yeah. knowing that he has the solutions. And we pray for that quick and speedy resolution Amen. to everything else that has to happen with uh, no further complications sure. in Jesus' name. And I that you and Marge are able to settle very quickly yeah. into your new home in Scarborough. And yeah. Father, that that home itself would become such a place of peace yeah. and yeah. blessing both to you and Marge but yeah. also, and to your family. But also I know that for others that walk through those doors and for others that spend time with you, Father, as this completes with peace, may it continue in peace. Amen. With shalom on that household and that family. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. I receive. Beautiful. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so That's much. wonderful. It's, it's good. I hope you've enjoyed meeting Ian and that uh, you get a chance to meet Ian and Marge uh, around in Scarborough or indeed here at, at Kingdom Faith Yorkshire. Sure. So, uh, in a very short space of time, there'll be a little bit of setting up. We've got Alex and Nigel here to lead us in a time of soaking worship right from this very space. So, they've got to change over and get that ready. But the plan is half past 12, uh, that they'll be ready. Uh, you don't need to go anywhere else. It will, it will happen here on the stream. So, while we're waiting for that, there'll be some things, uh, some, some of the slates will be coming up and showing. Tonight... The hub is open from six. Well, it's open at the moment, actually, if you're local and want to pop down for lunch. But it's open tonight from six o'clock. And then the evening meeting will kick off at seven. And that's in person here at the summit. Or you can join us online here on Light to North. Great to have you with us. Uh, I won't be back here in this this morning. It will be Alex and Nigel finishing off. So uh, hope to see as many of you as possible in person tonight. And all the rest of you, I'll see you online. God bless you.